to his OJ, everyone's favorite Nigerian. This that real life shit, nigga. All right, let's have some real talk. Tyler, the creator. Mm-hmm. Well, on Maverick Carter's interview series, mm-hmm. The Mavericks. A couple, it was it a couple weeks ago? Maybe a week and a half ago now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Made some waves online. So, what were y'all's thoughts on Tyler, the creator's conversation that he had in regards to just where music is now and versus like how he was coming up and how he was first introduced to music? Um, I have notes. I'll start off by saying I love Tyler. I love his passion. I didn't know. I didn't know you loved. I didn't know you were Tyler the Creator fan. No, who who did? Please. <laughs> um, I love his passion. I love his like student mindset when it comes to music. Um, I agree. Everything he said in that conversation is things that I've said in conversations with like my friends. Mm-hmm. Um, I love his influ. All the influences influences he's had like back in the day like his soul influence where it was erica and sade black eyed peas i went through a black eyed peas phase um just him being young and wanting to learn and try and mold it in his own way and like playing stuff or learning how to play stuff by ear is really important to music and i agree when he's saying it's fucked up that these kids who are white who come in to the culture as like looking at it as a gimmick like a get rich scheme like i can do this because it's fun i don't really give a fuck about it it's just gonna make me money it's gonna pop me off when there's children or just black people in general who are looking at music as like a way out um and something they're passionate about and then don't get the same kind of recognition because it's not gimmicky and it's not fun that pisses me off yeah i would say it's hard to discern which artists are genuine about it and which artists aren't genuine about it. You think so? Yeah, because there's so many artists out. Mm-hmm. I'm sure like there are people out there that, that think that Ice Spice doesn't care about music. I'm sure she was just making music because she enjoyed making music. Yeah. And then she just happened to pop off. Yeah. Right. I don't think she like got into it. Because she wanted to get rich. Yeah, yeah. I so, could see that. So I, I think there are like... Ah. But she's black still. I mean, there's more black artists that I think get in it just for the money than I think other people. Really? Like who? Blueface, Krishan. Like, yeah, she definitely got think, into it because like she's just. Blueface has said he's only in it for the, for the money. So, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I think we take advantage of it. And then sometimes there's like a crack in the wall where, like, and he alluded to Ian, so we could talk about Ian. But like an Ian comes in, but even Ian, I don't know if he was only doing it for money or if he was just like kicking, cause he's so young. Mm-hmm. I don't even know if he had that mindset of, oh, I'm gonna make this song solely to make money. Or if he was just like, I fuck with these artists from Atlanta. Let me do my best impression of them or what I think is like would sound cool. And it blew up because he was white. And he was like, all right, I'm just gonna keep doing it. So even though it's wrong, I don't think he should do. I think he should like make it be himself as an artist. Mm. I don't know if that was his intent, like only to make money. That just happened to be the end result. It's hard to know people's intent when they don't explicitly say it. I've been feeling what Tyler said. I've been feeling for like a cool minute, but I always kept it to myself because I didn't. Because I'm thirty. Because you don't want to be the I'm 30, old head. I'm thirty years old. Yeah. I don't want to be that old bitch and ass old head because I remember being like 21, 22, even 19, 18, and like looking at YouTube videos of Ice T popping off on Soldier Boy, and like bro, this is my old head, nigga hating. Like hip hop, mm-hmm. the beautiful thing about hip hop is it evolves. Mm-hmm. It doesn't stay stagnant. Like like other genres of music that I love, like jazz or like country music. Like it all sounds like the same. It might just get more refined and more like clear, but like hip hop is kind of always changing. So we kind of got, we got to just got to trust the younger generation. But I think what Tyler, this, Tyler creator said was something I've been holding off for about four years. And I'm just like, I'm not, I don't want to be the old head, but it does seem like just like a money grab because I, like niggas like Birdman, and I love Birdman, glorified, like, yeah, look, I got all these bust down jewelry, this and that. Niggas like Rick Ross back, like, back in that 2005-ish era, era 2006, it was like, yeah, rap is the money grab. 
And I feel like niggas just like, okay, I want to make money. I need to make money. So I'm just, I'm just make music. If I just invest in this equipment and just make something that's snappy, then cool. That's, that's a cool hustle. And that's fine. I respect that. But it's like, I don't know. It just kind of dilutes it a little bit because it's hard to pick out like who's like the actual artist from like who's just making music to make music. Yeah. I think but also another thing, there isn't even money in music anymore. No, there's like, not. That shit dried out. Like I would say last time you could really like be profitable within music and not be independent, maybe 2017, 2018. You think it's just like a social like. No, the streaming era fucked everything. So you, you no, no. I'm saying now, like if they people get, you're correct. You're a thousand percent correct. Streaming did fuck everything, but like if someone tries to get into music because it comes with a like a social, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't think of the word. Because like, you're saying for the clout, essentially. Yeah, essentially, yeah. Uh, I w- I do think like some people might, but again, like it's hard to view intentions. I feel like I have very good discernment, so I can tell. Um, do you? Maybe I'm being <laughs> we could talk about some of the artists you like. <laughs> what do you mean? What's a, is that shade? That was shade. What was that? What's because you be all right? You talk down on like someone like Taylor Swift, right? And I don't like Taylor Swift's music. Oh my but god! I would, but You're I would say for Taylor Swift right should, now. Should but I would say Taylor Swift is would be an authentic artist, like an authentic musician, to the point where like the label was. I never said she was inauthentic. I, I know. I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I'm just trying to make my point. And then you have an artist like Hook, whose music just sounds bad. Like, I don't know who that is. Most of, you don't know who Hook is? Most of her she's music, an IE artist. Most of her music sounds bad. And you were standing for her like hard. And that was when she she's first like came a, out. She's low-key a bad person. When she first came out, I didn't know she was a bad person. When have you seen me cape for Hook recently? She stopped making music because there was no money in it. <laughs> so, look, I'm just saying. I don't saying. see his point. I don't see your point. I never I, said I, Taylor I know, Swift. I know you wouldn't see my point. I wasn't gonna say nothing. I was just making a comment. I, but I, I'm always down to explain myself. Never this is said the real Taylor life Swift podcast. made music that was inauthentic because obviously it connects with some some girl somewhere. I'm saying that the level of success she has, based off of mediocrity, is sad to me. We'll talk about this another time. Um, I was gonna say something about this interview though. Well, he brought up a couple of different points. He talked about regionality mm-hmm. being gone, which I think that's more of a product of the internet. Um, if anything, because which is funny that he says that because when ASAP Rocky came out, he sounded like he was from Houston. Like mm-hmm. he was taking niggas flows from Florida too. So and that's like one of his best friends in music. Mm-hmm. They didn't start I, off as best friends. He didn't I, I know what you're saying. There is def like I remember the first time I seen that motherfucker. I was like, this is clearly a New York nigga influenced by Texas rappers, though. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know he was. I was like, I didn't. I didn't think he was from Houston, though. But every like I get what you're saying. Everything's yeah. starting to mold into one. Once, yeah, because the first time you see him, like you're watching the pes- peso video. Peso He's obvi- it's obviously New York. But yeah. if you're just listening and to with it, his accent, if you just listen to it, you're all like, I. This might be from somewhere else. No, he's no, well. I I just, I just knew he was from New York because he has such a strong New York accent. Remember when he tried to act in that movie Dope and tried to play a nigga from Inglewood? Yeah, yeah. when he was going out with like, Chanel. Yo, 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 from Inglewood, California. You heard? Nigga, shut the fuck Not up. Not here. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, it just it just sounded like a New York nigga that just wanted to be fashionable, be from Houston. But I, I get what y'all, I get what Tyler was saying. Everything's blended in. Like L.A. niggas don't say slime. Yeah, I will say that I really enjoyed um, the conversation in the in the moment where he was asked, like, how do you, I, I was just talking about this this morning um, and I don't really remember the question, um, but he was like, what do you like rap now? Like, do you like rapping or what? what is it that you like? And he was like, I can't really say that I like doing the rap part itself or like writing itself. And I'm paraphrasing tremendously. Um, because he's such a, he said, I'm not a poet, 
I'm a painter. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so where he's like... He likes I, creating the full the product. The whole thing, yeah. yeah. And he's like, that's why I like when people come and see me live because it creates the whole I'm like vision, the whole yeah. energy for the music. And I guess I really related to that because when I think about things that I want to do creatively, I'm not thinking about just the end product and like this is the structure of it. I'm thinking, what is this feeling here when I do this this way? Or what's the color here when I like... It, paint it this way it's just the whole picture and i think that's really nice um when it comes from an artist instead of someone who's so focused on one pinpoint they're like trying to do everything and as someone who's seen that dude like four or five times Mm -hmm. he's dead ass when he says he wants it to be a whole experience and his set list is never the same even no even when he doesn't have like a new album out like he still switches up the set list yeah do have you you've seen him live i've seen him like four or five times yeah, have you, you you haven't seen I haven't him live seen yet? Him live. I would I love for you to see. I used to be a vlog now mainstay. Yeah, no, I, the energy is crazy. And I've gone to a couple of his shows. I'm, I'm, like a, little, I'm a little surprised that he sat down with Maverick Carter. I'm They're like, friends, you? apparently, right? A little surprised. Maverick Carter. I, I feel like because Tyler is such a I'm music like I'm music guy. I'm, I'm the music guy. Music, music, music. But he's also a fashion guy. Mm-hmm. Also fashion guy. Mm-hmm. Maverick Carter to me is like the sports guy. The business guy but if you've I, paid attention to some of his recent interviews he's or like him in general he's been like pivoting himself into sports i wouldn't say maverick carter mm-hmm. I, I don't think maverick carter is a sports guy i think he's a business guy i just associate so him when, with lebron though. Uh-huh. yeah but he handles lebron's business like he is in charge of spring hill entertainment which is the movie entertainment the, shit, yeah, okay. which is the movie side like he was one of the producers on space jam uh, oh, two or three that. so like in that term it's like yeah you're gonna you're gonna meet like musical artists which is why a lot of the people on the shop aren't just athletes they're musical artists and actors I, and things of that I, nature I what you're saying EJ. i'm just saying i feel like tyler the creator is like whoever who manages his emails or whatever his label i don't know i feel like his inbox is a lot of interview requests from like music people and to pick maverick carter out of everybody was just a little bit like, oh, you gonna sit down with him? Like, I, I feel like there's just so many. I don't know. There's so many platforms and like interviewing like type of platforms where it's ran by mu- like music nerds. Yeah, I don't think Maverick Carter is like the music nerd. See, they nigga. obviously have a relationship though, because yeah, to. yeah, he was talking about his mom. Like, oh, I, I love your mom. Da da da. Relax. <laughs> um, and I feel like it. It if you're talking about that, uh, he would only do what he is comfortable doing and who yeah, he and sit respect. down with who he feels like would listen and is like knowledgeable yeah i don't think he would have made some of the comments that he made if he wasn't like cool with yeah, yeah i'm sure they have a personal relationship I'm yeah I don't, I don't think my card emailed him he probably like called him like hey yo what you doing or what how, how are you fuck like what, what email you doing call, week, whatever mm-hmm. like i'm sure he gets a lot of inquiries cool. whether in person, call, text, whatever. Shout out to Tyler the Creator. I remember, my, I, I think I told y'all this story. My homeboy from high school, Sarah High School, Rashad. I don't know what he's been up to. Cool dude. This is, I went to, I graduated 2011. So this is around 20, 2009, 2010. Tyler was like, kind of starting making some moves locally. Y'all yeah, feature was bubbling. Mm-hmm. And Rashad, nostalgia. Uh, and, and High like, school. Everybody missing. had that donut. I was like, all right, y'all. It was just so many movements Our going on when Wolf I was King. in high school. Where it was <laughs> the Dom Kennedy era, the Kendrick Lamar era, the mm-hmm. YG era, the Jerkin era, and the, the Odd Future era. It was a crazy era. To come it was up just in. a lot of like movements going or, or, or at the same time in LA when I was in high school. My homeboy Rashad and another homeboy, they were a part of Odd Future. Well, Rashad wasn't, but the other homeboy affiliated. Was. No, the other homeboy was legit in it. He was on Loiter Squad. I forget his name. He was the Mexican homeboy. And then Rashad just told me, I was like, who's up with I was like, what's up with this Tyler Creator shit? Because you be repping this shit. And he was like, man, we was just skateboarding in like seventh grade. Mm-hmm. It was just me and Tyler. Because Tyler used to follow him on Twitter and he don't follow him. He was like, Tyler looked at me. We were young, like 11 years old. And just like, I'm about to crack off with this music. Like something just snapped. No, like, and- I'm, like, I'm, I'm about to take off. Like I'm about to like, I'm so serious. And Rashad was just like, yeah, whatever. Like, no, cool. but that's something that I've always loved. Every time I see interviews about him or when he talks, he that's, and I think that's so important for at least children to see. And just people in general, like if you are that committed to something and you fully believe like, I'm going to fucking do this. I'm going to pop off when he was like, I'm going to get a Grammy. This song's going to be big. And he yeah. would do it. 
the, the well, way, not just do it. He put the work in. Yeah. The, like you gotta be it. Like from A to B. Like from eleven years old to eighteen. I'm sure he was making beats almost every fucking day. And mm-hmm. a lot of people aren't willing to do that. They're just like, oh, if I speak into existence, it's gonna happen. Yeah, those then, two things have to coincide uh, and then, for and it. Then to they pop. might work at it like maybe once a week, every other week, or something like that, instead of every day. And that's really what you need to separate yourself from like everybody else. Mm-hmm. But in this day and age, I guess also being naturally good at promotional skills and being good at social media also gives you a leg up. But that's also like feeds into the conversation of who's actually doing it for the music and who's there for the clout, Mm -hmm. you know? I guess what, like to wrap it up, I guess what I was saying is like, my point is when Sha told me that, like, cause I, we we all know a lot of people, we all know a lot of motherfuckers that make music and they're like, I'm 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 nice, I'm, I like that. But it's like the way he told me that story was like, it was like a spiritual thing. Mm-hmm. Where it was like, even if Tyler didn't have anything to lean on, like if I, I'm i gonna have the work ethic. Everybody thinks they have the work ethic for anything in life. It was like something told him like, yo, like I don't, I don't know, it's like, it like a higher power spiritual thing. Like, yo, I'm going to be a great, like I'm gonna be one of them. Yeah. And he just told the homeboy, and this was, I don't know, it, it just felt like this was like, Call from above, like he was like. You, the rap I feel gods, like you feel like, that in his music out. too. Yeah, like this wasn't. It wasn't based on off any work ethic at the time. It wasn't based off because everybody think they're gonna be nice. But the way he said it, the way Rashad told me the story was like it was something just like something just click was like oh no he's gonna be one of the chosen ones mm-hmm. and it and it, and it just happened and this at the time back in high school before he was where he's at now mm-hmm. it was back when he was a local artist so it's like damn I salute. I, I thought that our future shit at the time in high school was just a trend. I thought this shit was gonna die off in three years. Really? I didn't like yeah, it. I, I was. Didn't... I'm pleasantly. I'm. I'm happy to be wrong though. Mm-hmm. I didn't like a majority of their music until I would say. Bastard. Ty- no, Bastard was. I was like, this shit demonic. What the fuck are you y'all <laughs> listening to? Um, I would say Wolf when Wolf oh, came okay. out. I was just like, oh, this nigga can actually like produce and like make an actual okay like, song. so then because i know that conversation came up i don't know how much longer you want to spend on this topic but uh when i mean we here we're all tired of the creative fans yeah yeah uh the conversation that he was like a meme rapper and people were like he's not a meme rapper. like they may have been outlandish and like loiter squad all that kind of st- all that era they may have been outlandish and in your face and kind of crude but it was still like they were still rapping there was a lot of shock value in tyler the creators yeah. versus 100 percent. what was it what is it called horrorcore or some shit like that like it was yeah. like shock value just like yonkers rock. yeah that was horrorcore yeah. right mm-hmm. yeah. yonkers was good that was one of the few songs i actually liked but that's how yeah. i was introduced to him yeah. like, that's how a lot of people were introduced yeah. to him Niggas was writing upside down crosses and shit. Like, I went to a Catholic with the cat. school. I went to a Catholic mm-hmm. school and we was writing upside down crosses in the journal. I I, I just I I'm good. always gonna give that man his flowers. The fact that he's been able to draw that shit on a notebook since he was fucking in high school, middle school, whatever, and just to see how much it's flourished. Like I I think that's such a beautiful thing, and you can feel the passion and and the the want to put it out into the world and the student aspect when he talks about like music that he's like growing up and what he likes and why he likes it and the structure and and that's I feel that's so rare nowadays so I'm I'm obsessed obsessed I love it shout out to our future and everybody involved 